great and mighty are you, Jesus, glory to God. This last uh, New Year's Eve, we pray that you were with us on watch night. We had a wonderful time in the Lord, and we declared a new beginning. And in that same vein, we want to continue a message today with a text found in the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 21 through 24. Ephesians chapter 4, 21 through 24. I'm going to new, read the New Revised Standard Version. You read along in your version, and God will get the glory. For it says in Ephesians 4, 21 through 24, New Revised Standard Version, For surely you have heard about Jesus, and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus. You were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, corrupt and deluded by its lust, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. And the last verse says, and to clothe yourselves in the new self, created according to the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. Let us pray. And God and our Father, we come now with this, these words before our eyes, ears, and hearts, seeking your kingdom and your righteousness. Seeking, O oh God, your face this morning, asking that you would speak to us in our hearts, in our minds, in our soul. We pray, God, that you would bless us as we come and move in this new year, this new decade. Father God, this day and this year, we surrender to you our time and our mind our problems and our possessions, our praise and our worship. So have your way today and let your will be done in us as it is in heaven. For we believe that you are willing and able to help us, to heal us, to deliver us, and to use us for your kingdom and your glory. So we ask you to help us, O oh Lord God. We ask you to forgive us, O oh Lord God, and save us daily from the hands of the enemy and even of ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to draw your attention to this scripture. Another version says it this way. And the New, Trans New Living Translation says, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, he says, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on the new nature created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. And then the New International Version says it this way. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your former way of life. Put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and put on the new self. Created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Brothers and sisters this morning, I want to preach with the thought in mind, God's desire for your new attire. God's desire for your new attire. This, we preach a watch night, a new beginning. And I'm just believing that this is a, a, a new decade. If you count uh, a decade as 10 years, and we start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, that's one decade. And if you go 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
that's two decades. And then 21 would be the beginning of a new decade. And we are now at the, at the very beginning, the precipice of a new decade with a new beginning in our view. And I've come to declare today that I believe that God wants to do a new thing in our lives. He wants us to become more of what he purposed us to be. He wants us to be the head and not the tail. He wants us to be the lender and not the borrower. He wants us to be blessed and highly favored that others would look at our lives and, and, and wonder uh, how we became about and wonder whose God we serve so that they too can follow us as we follow Christ. But the, uh, this kind of growth is a process. This kind of change of newness of life is a process. And I'm believing that we, as we start this new year, must be mindful of the process. You know, years ago, when we first built our home, uh, we back in the uh, December of that one year, we, 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 2004, we signed all the paperwork. And uh, we had picked out the lot. And, and, and then for months, we would drive by waiting for the house to be built. And January came and went, and there was no sight of a house. February came, and there was no sight, true sight of a house. And, and month, it took months before we began to see the foundation pour, before we began to see the frame go up, before we began to see so much of the house come to pass. And then it seems like at the last month, uh, in record time, it went from just being a bunch of sticks on, on, on a foundation to a house with walls, painted walls and painted ceilings. And so we realized that uh, it, it was a process for the building of the house. And I want to tell you that as God is calling each of us uh, to the life that he purposed for us, that it too is a process and he does not expect us to build a house in one night. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. What he's declaring for us and they want us to understand is the transformation that he brings about in our lives does not come uh, uh, just overnight with a click of the finger, not the whole thing. And so we must allow ourselves the time uh, for the process and the transformation to take place. You see, Paul is talking about a transformation. He's talking about uh, taking off the old, putting on the new. This change of clothes, he's using the metaphor of what we wear, the taking off the old clothes and putting on new clothes. And this change of clothes is a process and not an overnight transformation to live your best life, to live your kingdom life, to live the life that God desires for you. You must change your behavior. And by changing our behavior, it changes our habits. And by changing our habits, it changes our discipline. And in doing so, we get the results that God so desires. And so Paul is pointing out to the people of Ephesus, he's pointing out to us today uh, as he draw our attention that there are two lives for the believer. Those of us who've been born again, those of us who've been baptized, who've been washed in the blood of the crucified lamb, that there are two lives that he displays, the old and the new. The old life, uh, he points out, is an old life, which it, in the old life, it was a life where we were all about self-pleasing desires. We were all about uh, flesh-pleasing priority. We were all about uh, uh, what me, myself, and I want, which always lead to destruction. Although we are deceived along the way that we'll be better, that we'll have more, that we'll have more joy, more peace, more prosperity when we seek to satisfy ourselves. But the devil is a liar and the truth is not in him. So Paul helps us to understand we got to get rid of our old life, the self-pleasing, uh, the, the self-pleasure, the flesh, flesh-pleasing priority. We've got to stop hurting people, even ourselves. We've got to stop hurting people physically, mentally, emotionally, just to please ourselves. We've got to stop deceiving people uh, just to please ourselves. We've got to stop uh, following the wrong people just to please ourselves. We've got to stop walking away from God just to please ourselves. Because the new life, in contrast, is the complete opposite. Because when we receive Christ, we receive the new nature, and therefore that new nature is one that not seeks, it doesn't seek to please ourselves. We now seek to please God. 
We develop new God-pleasing desires. We develop a new spirit of pleasing uh, God as a priority, a spirit-pleasing priority, which leads us to life, peace, joy, and prosperity as God has ordained. So in the new life, we must start helping people uh, and even ourselves, helping ourselves to please God. We must start telling people the truth, even speaking the truth to ourselves. Shakespeare said, said, to thine own self be true. Stop lying to yourself. He helps us to understand that the new life, we must start following Uh, those who are righteous and not those who are leading us astray. We must start walking towards God and not away from God. That's the difference between the old life and the new life. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad when I look back over my life, I can see a difference in my walk. I can see a difference in my talk. I can see a difference in my ways. I can see a difference that the Lord has made in my life. Oh, well, I'm not what I ought to be. I thank God I'm not what I used to be. The old writer who wrote the song says, please be patient with me because God is not through with me yet because I shall come forth as pure gold. I'm not what I used to be, but I thank God that I am where I am right now. He is transforming our lives daily if we allow him. He's he's transforming us into a new creation. Paul lays out this text and tells the people of God, because they have Christ, because they have been taught the truth, they must do three things to have the life that is promised of God, a transformed life. And I just believe today all of us want a transformed life today because we know God knows what's best. We know that God has the best. We know that God is the best. And we know God wants the best for us. And Paul lays it out in simple terms. It's not complicated. He lays it out in simple terms. Three things the believer must do to have the kingdom life, to have the abundant life, to have that Christ-like life that God so desires. The first thing that Paul tells us is that we first got to put off the old. Paul uses clothing as a metaphor. He's saying you got to take off your old clothes. You've got to take off your old ways of life. You've got to take off your old bad habits. You've got to take off the old before you can get to that transformed life. I don't know about you, but when it comes to taking off the old, what I have found out is, you know, have you ever seen somebody uh, in some uh, clothing that you didn't quite understand or agree with? Maybe, uh, maybe it was wrinkled. Maybe it had a hole in it. Maybe uh, it just didn't go together. And you wonder why would she wear that? Why would he wear that? That doesn't even go together. But at the same time, if you look closely, you'll find that person liking what they're wearing, glad to be wearing their wear, and don't care what anybody else thinks. And I'm talking to some of y'all who are who are walking around, and you just don't care about what others think about what you're wearing. But when it comes to the spiritual life, we must care. We must care of what God thinks because God's desire is that we have some new attire in this new year. And there are three, Paul says, put off the old garb, put off the old clothes, put off, you know, take off those. There are three types of old clothes that uh, we should be looking at removing in 2021. That we've got to get rid of first. Get rid of your worn and torn. Get rid of, mama used to say, t- throw those raggedy pants away. Get rid of the worn. I know y'all buying them with the holes in them now, but, 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 but God, God would have us to understand we've got to get rid of the worn and torn in our lives. The worn and torn is no good for us, it's no good anymore. It's, get, it's time to get rid of those. And, and, and though it's a metaphor of our spiritual life, get rid of these worn and torn habits in our lives that's making us look bad and are not good for us. It also applies to our daily lives. We do need to get rid of some of our uh, uh, worn and torn clothes. Uh, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, if you have children, you'll find that they love certain clothes and they'll wear it to, to the threat. Through You can see through it. And so what my wife and I have to do is when she would do laundry, she would make them disappear. <laughs> she, she would get rid of the worn. She's like, I'm not even washing this again. 
And she would toss it out because it did not represent who he was nor who we are as a family. So get rid of the worn and torn in your life. Get rid of those things that are no good for you. Get rid of those things that had their day. It's no longer. Look, you, if you're a believer in Christ and you still 70, 60 years old, hanging out in a club with 21 year old, you need to get rid of those old clothes. It's time to give up that which is not good for you. It's never been good for you, but now it's worn out. That, let's say, listen, attitude-wise, if you've been bitter and nasty for a long time, it's time to get rid of that old attitude. You've been that way too long. That's old now. It, you want everybody to accept you the way you are. I just tell the truth. I just tell the truth. Now, well, how come you don't like when the truth is told to you? Paul helps us say, get rid of the old, put off the old. Get rid of your worn and torn. And then get rid of that, those clothes. I'm helping somebody in the closet. Get rid of the clothes that don't fit. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. Get rid of the, that which the clothes that don't fit. And in the spirit life, if Paul is saying, get rid of the clothes that don't fit, that make you uncomfortable. The other day, I got a package in the mail uh, from Amazon, one of my favorite stores. And I had ordered some uh, pajamas for Christmas. And they came the other day after Christmas in 2021. And, uh, and, and, and it was 2X large. And so when I opened up the package and held them up like this, I was like, looked at the tag, and it surely said 2X large. But I tried to put my arm in it and couldn't get my, couldn't get my arm through the sleeve. I had to give it to one of our sons who it fit perfectly. See, when it comes to our lives growing in Christ, there are some new ways and there's some old ways that should no longer make us comfortable. We can't just be hanging around everybody talking about everything. Some things should make us uncomfortable and we want to get rid of those things. We don't want to keep hanging around those things and we certainly don't want to keep wearing those things. Paul helps us say, put off the old, get rid of the worn and torn, the raggedy is no good for us. Get rid of those, those things that don't fit, that are uncomfortable, that we've outgrown. You're too old for that now. You're too old to be playing those kind of childish games. You're too old to keep doing the same thing over the same thing. You're too old to be doing, you, you just, even as a teenager, you're too old to be doing these things. As an adult, you're too old to be doing these. As a senior citizen, you're too old to be doing those things. You've outgrown those clothes. You can't act like a babe in Christ forever. So he says, get put off the old. Now we got to get rid of the worn and torn and your closet. Get rid of the, those that don't fit. Then lastly, get rid of the clothes that are inappropriate for the dress code. Get rid of the, the things in your life that don't fit where you're going. Uh, I'll never forget uh, some years ago when I was a young man and uh, I uh, was young in my t- early 20s and I was invited uh, somewhere and, uh, uh, in California. In fact, it was a New Year's. Uh, I was out in Los Angeles for a New Year's uh, party uh, back in those days, and uh, I happened to uh, be with some people who knew some people in high places and got invited to a New Year's Eve celebration party at a penthouse uh, in a fabulous uh, building, and you know that they had money because it was on the top floor, and their terrace is about as big as some people's houses. And in L.A., everything costs a great deal. And so they said, Michael, since you're visiting, uh, you can come with us. Y'all, y'all, y'all can come. And I said, okay, I, I wasn't prepared for this. And so they said, just wear something nice. And so I said, I said okay. And so I put on, uh, I showed my friend what, what I was going to wear to the uh, New Year's Eve party. And uh, coming from Jacksonville, you know, if you live here, you think this is the big city. But uh, uh, out there, I was considered a country bumpkin. And so uh, the brother said, oh, oh, uh, uh, you can't wear that. <laughs> he said, uh, it's not that kind of party. You, you see, it, it, it's a penthouse party. So you got to find some clothes. You, you, you can't wear these. These are, are they're, they're nice clothes, but they're inappropriate for where you're going. And so what God would have us to understand is Paul is teaching us, we got to put off the old. We got to take off those clothes that are inappropriate. Take off those ways, those ways in life, those habits in life that, that are not based on where we're going. Even though it was all right when you were at this level of walking with God, it's no longer all right when you're trying to get to this level with God. Paul says, take off the old. Somebody say, take off the old. Take off the old, take off the old clothes, Paul is saying. And the second thing he says that we must do is be renewed. 
He says in verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your minds. He said to be made, to be renewed means to be made new of the mind with a new attitude, with a new way of thinking, with a new understanding. He says, be renewed. Let God make you new again. And this is important because when it comes to transformation, when it comes to our lives becoming what God wants us to be, we must understand that you must first start taking off the old so God can begin to renew you. He must, we must start taking off the old first, then let, let, allow God to renew you, then start putting, you know, he says, take off the old, then let, uh, uh, be renewed. Let God renew your mind. Paul said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so he tells him to take, take off the old and let God renew your mind. You got to allow God to change your mind. Allow God to transform you, form you and make you new. Transformation is the outcome of what we do, but the transformation is made by God himself. See, when you change your behavior, God will transform your life. Oh, man. See, we keep trying to change us, but God is the one who makes the transformation. So if you want to transform life, you, what you have to do is change your behavior and let God come and transform your lives. Paul said, allow him, be, be, made, be made renewed, be, be made new again. Allow God to renew you by changing your behavior. And I promise you, he'll transform your life. The last thing Paul tells us to do, the third thing he says, not only put, put off the old, and be renewed. But the third thing is, if you take off your clothes, you need to put on some new clothes. Paul says, put on the new. Take on some new ways in 2021. Put on something new. Put on what God makes you, that, that makes God comfortable, not you comfortable. Put on that which makes God comfortable. Put on that which is appropriate for worship. Put on that which is appropriate, appropriate for going higher in the presence of God. Put on that which is new. Brothers and sisters, I'm convinced more today than ever before that God took us through 2020 to bring us to this 2020 year, 2020 year, 2021 for something new. He didn't preserve our lives just to live on the way we were. He's giving us a second chance. He's given us another chance. He has shown us in 2020 what he can do. He's a preserver. He's a healer. He's a protector. He's a provider. He has, shown, he has revealed himself to us. And now he's looking for us to change our attire. God's desire for our new tire. And I want to share just a couple of things for you. If you really want to change uh, God, uh, uh, change your tire for 2021, if you really want God to transform your life, well, you can have the peace that pass of all stand, all understanding. When you can have the joy, unspeakable joy, when you can have prosperity, that, that's more than enough for you that you can bless other people. You can bless your church. You can bless your family. When you want to walk in that kind of favor, the fullness of the favor of God, then you've got to be willing willing to change some behaviors in your life. There are three things I want to recommend for you this year. As you go into this new year, I believe that will help three behavior changes. If you do these, I promise you uh, it will bring forth transformation in your life. First, I want you to talk to and listen to God prayerfully daily. I know you're used to talking to him when you're in trouble. I know you're used to talking to him when you're scared. I know you're used to talking to him when you, when you want something. But God is more interested in you listening than you talking. He says, I know your thoughts from afar off. I know what you need before you even know you need it. He said he's more interested in us listening than talking. So in this new year, I want you to commit to talking and listening to God prayerfully daily. The second thing I want you to do is to read your Bible daily. Read your Bible daily. I, I, I don't have one today, but I'm going to prescribe to you one of my favorite books. It's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, 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 it's a daily devotional Bible that you read the Bible in one year. In fact, it's called the One Year Bible. That if you read each day of the year, you would have read the entire Bible by the end of December of this year. And if you don't like reading that much, you can break it down in two years. Read the Old Testament and the Proverbs in, uh, on, on once uh, uh, every day, and then the next year you read the New Testament and Psalms, and in two years you read the whole Bible. 
Or you can do like some. You can just read, uh, <laughs> read the Old Testament, amen, one year, read the New Testament one year, and then read Psalms and Proverbs the third year. Whatever the combination, we've been with Christ too long to not have read his whole love letter to us. We've been with God too long to not have known the word for ourselves. Brothers and sisters, God has a desire for our new attire. And that means it's time for you and I to change our clothes, change our behavior so that God can transform our lives. Now, let's let me close with this. Christ died on the cross that we might live. The word says whom Christ sets free is free indeed. In essence, God, Christ has broken the chains. He has opened the door. But we must take the steps to walk out of the prison, walk out of the shackles. And in order to walk out, we must change our behavior, take off the old and put on the new. I know many people make resolutions every year and they fall short and don't can't even remember them by February 1st. This is not about making resolutions. This is about making a commitment to do something different to wear some different clothes in 2021. Let this be the year you give up profanity, cussing. I told somebody, just start not cussing on Sundays. Just just start there, amen. On Sundays, you don't curse anymore. And then expand that as you go to the weekend. And before you know it, you can pick up seven days because there's so many other ways to express ourselves without defiling ourselves. Give up that which does not make you comfortable, does not make God comfortable. Give up those things that don't fit to where God is calling you. Give up the inappropriate attire. I promise you, God will transform your lives. So often we focus on what we want. I want to be prosperous. I want to be famous. I want to to have an abundance. We focus on what we want instead of focusing on what we must do for God to give us what we want. We must t- this year focus on doing what God is asking us to do. Doing, taking off the old and putting on the new. Won't you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all of our sins. To set us free. To give us victory over sin, over death, even the grave. God, since the doors have been opened, since the shackles have been loose, since we have been declared set free, give us the power and desire to walk in that freedom. No longer captive by our old ways, but loose by our new ways, our new clothing. Bless all who are listening, all who are sharing with us today. I pray that they would have the desire to change their attire in 2021. Change their attire to what God desires. This is our prayer, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Join us next week at the same time, 10, 15 a.m. at the same place on YouTube. Be sure, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can always get the notification. And do likewise. Go on our Facebook page, Tabernacle Jacks. Be sure to uh, follow us. To like us so that you can be connected when we're about uh, when we're on, online. We certainly want you to be a part of that. So please uh, do that as we go forward in this new year. I don't know about you, but I've got so much to thank God for. And when I look back over 2020, I thank God that He brought us through. We made it through. We made it through. After all we've been through, we still made it through by His hand, His grace, and His mercy. So God bless you. We'll see you again soon. I love you in the Lord. We miss you and look forward to being together again in 2021. God bless you all. Hallelujah.